Okay, so can anybody tell me what area means? Raise your hand, raise your hand. Anybody know what area means? Will? It's a way of measuring the size of a surface in square units. Remember the little squares we drew up here yesterday to measure the whiteboard? Um, yeah. Measuring a flat surface in square units. Um, so, first thing we talked about yesterday is how to find the area of a rectangle. How do we find the area of a rectangle, anybody? Uh, base times height. Base times height. Sometimes it's called length times width on a rectangle. How about the area of a square? Side, side, square. Side, square. Still base times height. The base and height just happen to be the same thing. So, uh, how about parallelogram? Um, you move that thing over. Oh. Base times base height. Time. The only difference is <laughs> the height is the vertical line, not the side of the parallelogram, like it is on rectangle and rhombus. Okay. And then what's what am I missing here? Triangles. Triangles. And how do we do triangles? Divide by two. Okay. Again. Yeah, the height of the triangle is the vertical line, not the side of the triangle, unless it's a right triangle. Because if it's a right angle, that line is going straight up. Anyway, that was yesterday. Okay. You guys all seem to remember that really well. Okay, today we're starting with trapezoids. Let me see if I can find the trapezoid. You guys remember what this side of a trapezoid is called? Uh, base. Base. So I'll call this base one, and this one base two. You guys remember what these sides are called? Legs. Um, legs really aren't as important on this lesson, but okay. This is the hardest formula probably to remember with polygon areas. Uh, because it's a little bit bigger. Um, here's how it works. If I squish this in at the same time pulling this out a little bit, what shape would that make? Rectangle. Rectangle. If I kind of average these, like push this in halfway, pull this out halfway, until they were square, it would be a rectangle, right? So it would be, it would keep the same area because you're making this smaller and this bigger. So basically, instead of base times height, it's average of the bases times the height. Does that make sense? So here's what it looks like. Area equals average of the bases. You guys remember how to average two things together? Average of the bases times the height. Um, if you look it up in the book, I think they wrote it like this. Okay, B1 and B2, this just means the first base, second base. It just means the two different bases. I like the first one better because it shows average of the bases times the height, uh, probably, I don't know, it's, I mean, it's not that doesn't really matter. All right. Stop. Um, and then we got a couple more. So the other thing we're learning is, what shape am I drawing here? Tight. Except before I did it. Uh, yeah, bad tight. Okay, kite. Um, what do you think these lines right here would be called? Well, what's that line called? Angle bisector. Diagonal. When you draw a line from a 
vertex to, a non, to another vertex. It's called a diagonal. So these are called diagonals. So anyway, it turns out, so I'll call this like diagonal one, diagonal two, that it works out to diagonal times diagonal divided by two for a kite. Diagonal times diagonal divided by two. Is that the average of the diagonals? No, because no. you're multiplying them instead of the damage. Right. Uh, when you average things, you add them together and divide by two. So this is not the average, it's uh, different. So anyway, you do <coughs> diagonal times diagonal divided by two. Yeah, you probably should be writing this stuff down. This is not a question on that. Actually, it might be, but it's not the one. Hurt me. I haven't started the assignment yet. We're still, anyway, uh, 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 what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. He did his hair up real nice and everything. Hair over there. I got hair everything. <laughs> hair over there, tearing him down. Uh, okay. Um, so a rhombus is also like a parallelogram, right? So you could do base time height, like a parallelogram, but it also works if you use the exact same formula as the kite. So diagonal, it, base times height works, but also diagonal times diagonal divided by two works on, <coughs> works on the wrong by as well. Works on the wrong by, by Which is the same thing as kite? Yep, same thing as kite. <laughs> One less formula to memorize. No, no, Marion. Ben. <laughs> okay. You guys ready to jump in? Yep. Number one. Uh, state the area formula for the figure studied thus far. A squared. What's the area formula for a squared? Uh, side, squared. Side, squared. side squared. S squared. B. What's the area formula for a rectangle? Base times height. Just use the abbreviations, don't write it out. I did not shoot Mr. Jordan. People screaming over. C. <laughs> Parallelogram. Base times height is correct. Rectangles and parallelograms have the same formula. Triangle. Oh, base times height. Base times height divided by two. Okay, this one we might have forgotten already because it's the bigger one. Trapezoid. Trevor. B1 plus B2 divided by 2 times height. Right. Now, the parentheses do matter. Uh, come on now. Uh, base plus base divided by 2 times height. Parentheses do matter on that one because you do need to add and divide before you multiply. Wow. Um, <laughs> let's 
Let's say here, guys. I got a kind of an important question for you. If you uh, let's say the bases were three and seven, if you plug this in the calculator, like for this part right here, three plus seven divided by two, would this work? No. No. You guys know why it would be wrong? It would divide first because it calculators do order of operations unless you had a really simple one. Um, so it would get this one wrong. So you need to either do this like by yourself in your head and say it's 10 divided by 2 or just put 3 plus 7 equals and then divide by 2 equals and then times the height equals. Or you can plug it all in just like this. But the fraction bar, you know, it's kind of a pain. You could do it like that. Or you could use that other formula. The other formula, it's the same thing. You still need to use parentheses. But that would work also. Okay, number, or is F actually. Uh, what's the area formula for a kite? Diagonal. Yeah, D1 times D2 divided by 2. Diagonal times diagonal divided by 2. <coughs> okay, and then what was the rhombus? Same thing. They also, the book also put or base times height, uh, but you can just put one of them, it's fine. Wait, you can do base times height too? Yeah, a rhombus is also a parallelogram, so the base times height works for rhombus as well. The book is going to give you a lot of diagonals, though, because... BTS? BTS fan. Okay, on two, what are the diagonals? Yeah. Um, on number two, <clears throat> what are the lengths of the diagonals? Eight inches and seven inches. Eight feet and seven feet, yeah. Oh, eight, sorry. Okay, so on two, since it's it's a rhombus, uh, you would do eight times seven divided by two. And how did we label that? Yesterday, how did we label areas? Squared. Feet squared. Remember that one little mark, apostrophe thing, feet, feet? Yeah, all areas should be something squared. Okay, number three. What shape is that? Trapezoid. Trapezoid. How many trapezoids? Average the bases. 12 plus 22, 34. Divide by 2, 17. Times the height. Times 9. A few of these questions are kind of tricky. Does anybody see what's tricky about number five? Anybody yeah, spot it? They aren't the same unit. Right. They're not measuring with the same unit type. You guys know what it, that means? Mm -hmm. The top says five feet, and the bottom says one yard. It's three feet. Yeah. One yard turns into three feet. So what would that <laughs> up and down, how long would the up and down diagonal be? Eight feet. And how long would the left and right diagonal be? Six. Right, six feet. Three, 
One each yard turns into three feet. So three plus three is six. So basically we got an eight foot diagonal and a six foot diagonal. So you guys remember the formula? Eight, yeah, it's a kite. So eight times six divided by two. Number five. They do that on a lot of these problems today. I don't think they did it once yesterday. You like use different measurement types. So you gotta be careful. Number six, they do it. Number seven, they do it. We're about to do number seven. And then you do yard squared? Feet squared. We changed it into feet. A yard would be 36 inches, but where are you looking for that? Well, on that one they do feet, so you could turn you could turn the feet into inches, or you could turn the inches into feet. Uh, okay, on number seven. Um, what shape is that? Trapezoid. trapezoid. How can we tell it's trapezoid? The left and the right side are parallel. That's that's like the definition of trapezoid. The, it has one pair of parallel sides. We know they're parallel because they're both perpendicular to the bottom. Anyway, the 6 inches and the 1.5 feet would both be the bases. And we could use 2 feet as the height. Kind of turn it sideways. Somebody need to turn their phone off. <laughs> is it in this class or is it in the other one? Thank you. It's time for him to wake up. This is Christmas break schedule. Uh, okay. Let's see. Oh, yeah. So, number seven has the same problem as number five. So, because the left side says feet and the right side says inches. So, what's a good plan to uh, solve that problem? Okay, we could turn feet into inches. I would probably turn... Since most of them are in feet, I'd probably turn six inches. How many feet is six inches? 0. 0.5. So I'd probably turn the six inches into 0. 0.5 feet. <laughs> the book does put both answers, so if you want to do feet or inches, they're both okay, like on number six also. Uh, so six inches is half of a foot, because 12 inches is a foot, right? So we can change that to a 0. 0.5. So we need to average 0. 0.5 and 1.5. This is, that's what that is, 2 divided by 2 is 1, times 2 is 2, 2 square feet. What in the Sam Hill? shape is that? It's a rhombus. So basically you need the length of the diagonals. That's the best way to do number eight. Number nine, what shape is that? Trapezoid. So I need the bases and the height. So let's start with the top base. How long is the top? 
three. One, two, three. How long is the bottom? Six. Six. It goes from zero to six. So it's six long. So we have to average three and six. And then what's the height of the trapezoid? It goes from, yeah, it goes from zero on the y-axis up to four on the y. Right? So it's four tall, so the height of the is four, and that would be a formula. Um, nine divided by two times four. 4.5 times 4. How, how should we label this one? Unit squared. You guys are on the ball. So you need the diagonals on that one too. Number 11, a rhombus with diagonals measuring 27 and 13. So what do we do with diagonals of a rhombus? Multiply and divide by 2. What did you guys get on that one? Trapezoid with bases 20 inches and 7 inches and a height of 2. Okay, so average the bases, so 20 plus 7 divided by 2 times the height, which is, uh-oh. Uh, the height says 2 feet. So since it, since it said 20 and 7 inches on the bases, let's change the 2 feet into inches. How many inches are in 2 feet? 24. If 1 foot is 12 inches, 2 feet is 2 times 12 inches. So we'll say the height is 24 inches. Yeah, be careful. Read the labels. to build kites, each with a three-foot spine, vertical spar. Okay, you guys see the picture over there? They kind of point out what that means. The spine is what you might guess, kind of like our spine goes, you know, up the middle. So that's what a spine is on a kite. Uh, the spine is three feet long and a two-foot spreader. 
horizontal spark. Uh, spreaders going out, spreading out the kite. The spine, so you and the friend both had a three foot spine and a three foot spreader. The spine extends six inches over the spreader in your friend's design. The spine extends six inches over the spreader in your friend's design. You guys interpret that? And then on, while well, it extends 12 inches over the spreader in your design. So in our design, it's uh, lower. Something like that. It's not a perfect picture, but that's kind of gives you. So the question is, which kite, if either, will require a larger sail? The sail is like the actual <coughs> plastic or whatever that covers the kite to make it float. Um, it's, it's all, yeah, whatever. Um, which kite, if either, would have the larger sail? Any guesses? Ours. <coughs> the 12 inch hour kite? Yeah. Yep. Why? Um, because when you have six inches, that makes 2.5 feet, which gives you 3.75 uh, square feet. Well, if you add... Okay, two, I don't know what you're saying. And also, it's not the right answer. So, um, <laughs> at the beginning of the problem, it said both of the two things, the spine and the spreader were three, both yours and your friends had a three foot and a two foot spine and spreader. So on a kite, what did we call these lines earlier? The diagonals. So remember that the area is just diagonal times diagonal divided by two. It doesn't matter where we put the diagonal at, if we move it up or down, as long as the diagonals are the same length, the area should be the same. Diagonal times diagonal divided by two. So they're the same. So we're gonna, we gotta explain it though. So our answer is, the question was which is bigger? We're gonna say neither because if the diagonals are the same, the areas are the same. assist on 16, but not the whole thing. On 16 um, A, it's asking for the area of those three steps, and if you look at it in the picture, it's two right triangles and one kite. And they give you all the numbers there. For 16 B, I'll probably have to help you guys in a little bit. But let's go ahead and go to 17 for right now. Uh, 17. No. So on 17, it's, it, it gives us the area of the kite is 720 square millimeters. And it gives us 15 on the top part, 20, 20, but it doesn't give us the Y, the bottom part of the diagonal. Um, so we got to find it. So what I want you guys trying to do right here is write an equation, an area equation, to set it up so we can solve for y. So on number 17, everybody try this on their own. Try to write an equation for the area that would help us solve for y. It gives us the area.
it should be diagonal times diagonal divided by 2 equals the area. You guys see where I got the diagonals from? Uh, the horizontal diagonal is 20 and 20, so that's 40. The vertical diagonal is whatever 15 plus y is. So you divide that by 2, that should give you the area. So that's what we write. Okay, the question is solve for y though. So what would, so now we gotta use our algebra skills. What would be a good first? Multiply by 2. Actually, on this one, we could uh, also, since 40 is multiplied to 15 plus y, we could reduce 40 and divide by 2. So this could turn into 20 times 15 plus y. So then divide by 20? Yeah, we could divide by 20. You could, al you could also do distributive property at that point if you wanted to, but... Yeah, I would probably divide by 20. How many times is 20 going to 720? Would that be 300? Close. Well, 300. The zeros kind of cancel out, so it's more like 72 divided by 2. 36. Okay, actually, since I'm recording this, let's go ahead and uh, talk about 16b. <coughs> so, I don't know if that's right or not. Um, 16b asks for the obtuse angles of the kite. They show a picture, like it's talking about the steps and the stairs. Um, a is find the area of those three steps. So it's a right triangle, a right triangle, and a kite. You have to add those areas together. Um, but B is asking for the obtuse angles in the kite, which would be these two. It tells us that the central angle around the steps is 30 degrees. So that would be like from here to here. And because it's this top one is like the corner of the house, um, it's, it's a 90 degree angle up there. Okay, so basically I know these two angles are 30 and 90, and I gotta find these two angles. On a kite, these two angles are always identical. Uh, so what do I know about these four angles all together? Try again, 360, because it's a quadrilateral. So basically 30 plus 90 plus X plus X should equal 360. And uh, once you solve that for X, that's, that's the answer. That's the, that stands for the measurement of these obtuse angles in the triangle, or in the kite. That's, that's uh, 16B. 16B, yes. 16A asks to find the area of those three steps. 